Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Tonight, I actually just received this today and I've been pretty excited about it. Non-traditional war game. This is actually a worker placement Euro-based, Euro-style game. Um, fairly abstract, but it does deal with uh, World War II. There's uh, a double-sided board. We'll look at it. But you can play once, you can play in the Pacific, or you can play in the, what they call the Alpine board. But very much looking forward to this one. I would like to play it with my children, and I would also like to try it with my wife. She loves games, um, but they have to be a certain style of game. So I'm hoping that she likes this one. But So yeah, this is General Orders, World War II. And my guess is that they're going to do a series of these style of games. Don't know that for a fact. This is published by Osprey Games. You can see their logo in the upper right corner. And the game is designed by David Thompson, the dynamic duo of David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. These are the guys that have done War Chest uh, and then Undaunted, uh, the Undaunted series. So... Very much looking forward to this. Very cool little box. You can see there, you know, it's it's in my hand. It's a small compact box. And actually, after looking at the components, I wonder why they made it such a tall, thick box. Uh, they could have made it probably half the thickness and I think it would have fit everything. But it is nice looking. I bought this for $25 off of Miniature Market. Uh, it looked like that was the cheapest one out there. But let's go ahead and uh, look at it. I'll go ahead and flip it over on the back. I uh, wanted to show you this part. So it's for ages 14 plus. The game plays in about 30 minutes or less. Pretty simple game. Two-player game. Um, and it, it is not cooperative. It is versus. So it's you're attacking each other. You're taking each other's areas. Uh, doing that kind of thing. The game has a game board, 80 wooden pieces. There are troops. There are commanders, which are cylinders. There are airplanes, which are only used in the Pacific Theater game. Um, there are dice, custom dice, so it's a pretty cool little game. There are operations cards that you can play. Uh, eight plus tokens, 32 cards, and then the four dice that I mentioned. This is a brand new game, just came out maybe a couple of months ago. Maybe three months ago, I, I think it was available at Gen Con, but officially became available sometime in early November. So about two months ago. So let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, once again, really nice graphically. I think it's a nice looking game. I've been pretty excited about playing this and getting it. So let's go ahead and uh, and look at the package. Miniature sized rule book. You can see it is full color. I've looked through it. It's very well written. I think very, very clear. I think that David and Trevor have a have a good idea of how to write good rule books. And I, I've read through this, and I think the game is going to be uh, fairly, fairly simple to play. You can see there are 23 pages with a back cover. Has some historical notes there. I thought that was good. Um, has an example turn at the back of the rule book, which I think is a good thing. Talks about the different elements. There are little uh, tokens that are called area bonuses that you can acquire, and they're going to give you special abilities. Here's the operation cards. There are 32 of those. Uh, and then it talks about air conflicts and land, land conflicts. There is fighting in this game. Here's some of the various actions, support actions, as well as uh, other actions. These are called linked. Uh, things like advancing, flying, para dropping which is very very cool by the way barrage bomb that can all be done with the aircraft uh look at all the components there laid out we'll look at those here in just a minute but really a pretty simple looking fast playing unique and tight little game very excited about it if you can't tell uh this is the counter sheet you can see there's not a lot on it this is kind of a main player board. Uh, no, I'm sorry, an accessory board that goes above the main player board. This keeps track of a couple of things. You'll notice that little palm tree there. This means that this side is for the island map. 
Uh, and on the other side, you can see the mountain symbol. That means that is for the, uh, the Alpine map. This is a standby area. You're going to store commander markers there that you can gain through card play and other things. Those are your, your guys that you're going to put out on the board to take, take actions, placing and moving your troop uh, circ, uh, disc. Sorry. Here is the round marker. There's a little uh, token here. We'll look at it here in just a minute. This is a double-sided token. Um, and this is the round marker. So there's a blue side for the blue player and a yellow side for the yellow, yellow player. You're going to put that there and then it's going to move. It also can be changed when you take this action. There are two actions that you can take off of this accessory board, reinforce and then plan. Reinforce is literally uh, putting extra troop discs out on the board. You're going to place a commander marker in one of these hexagonal spots and then take that action. This you'll gain six of those troop tokens. This one you'll gain just five. Uh, then there's the plan action where you're going to draw a couple of operations cards. Here you're going to draw one operation card and then flip over. Uh, so if you take this action and it's the other, the blue player's turn, you're now going to change that uh, to you and you will have initiative and go first each round. Fairly simple. So that's a look at that little board. Um, once again, these other tokens, I'll put that round marker back in. I've popped one of these out. These just give you different special abilities that you can do. You, you can you, you can advance more tokens. You can draw some more of your commander cylinders from the supply, gain additional cards, etc. When you control these, you're going to get that advantage. There's only three or four, though, I think, on each game board, uh, and then the others will not be placed. This one gives you an extra die when you do barrage attacks, so they're pretty cool, um, and that's kind of the gaminess about the game. Uh, next thing we have here is the board itself. Very small, cute little board. Let's go ahead and put it out there. I'll move these things. I need to flatten it out. Uh, there we go. But yeah, pretty simple looking board. This is the island side, and you can see here's the Pacific Ocean. Um, you've got these different areas. This is a little more asymmetric than the other uh, one. And what I mean by asymmetric is... If you look at this, here's the center areas. Yellow's going to start here in these two hexes, and then blue's going to start here in these two hexes. Actually, I think you start with units where you have these little circles. So here you can see there's three circles. You're going to have three units in those two hexes together. And then here you're going to have three units in these two hexes, three units in those two, and only one in this area that gives you the barrage uh, ability. And then you're going to fight over the centralized regions. And then over here is the blue uh, the blue player. You can see the blue HQ. They have three, three, and three, and then one in the barrage. So very symmetric, very symmetrical in its layout. And then on this side, you can see uh, blue player is over here, blue headquarter, uh, Yellow player is over here, yellow headquarter. And you can see the, the, the areas are just a little bit different, laid out a little bit differently, um, makes it a little bit unique. The other thing that's cool on the Alpine board is you've got these air zones that coincide. You'll notice this orange hatched barrier border. That actually coincides with this area, all of the orange spaces, that air zone is over here. So if you have planes in this area, you're actually controlling this air zone. This one is kind of greenish. It's this one here. Uh, this is orangey yellow. That's here. This one is red. Uh, and you can see this. And then this is blue. So kind of cool. Just there, there's some differences. These are where those tokens go. These little tokens here, let me just throw that down. You're going to randomly draw and place those in these areas, and then you can go for those uh, and gain those advantages. So pretty cool. 
Uh, let's flip that over to that Alpine side. These are the uh, victory points. So when you control this area at the end of the game, you're going to gain two victory points, two victory points. These are only worth one. This one's worth three in the center and then one, two, and two. The other really cool thing about this game is it really focuses on supply, uh, meaning you can't do a whole lot if you have guys in, say, this zone, but you don't have connected areas back to your home base. Uh, they don't die, but you really can't do anything with them. So you have to link these up and make sure you maintain pieces in those areas uh, or they are not in supply. So kind of a cool thing. And, and as war gamers, we all know that supply is king. If, if you don't have supply, you can't uh, necessarily do anything. So there are, once again, each side has three different types of, of these wooden tokens. These are your commander disc. There are, uh, you start with five of these, and then there are four that are in your reserve at the top uh, of the board here. And you can gain those through uh, play, the playing of different, different cards. So those are the command discs. And you can see they're hexagonal, so that's also, uh, as well as hexes on the board, you have these hexagonal uh, pieces, which is good. And you'll notice these action spaces, that's where you're going to place your workers, your commanders, to take these various actions. So here is, uh, these are advanced, where you're going to move in and then attack. You've got, uh, uh, where, hold on. Yeah, up here, this is where you're going to draw more cards, planning, uh, and get reinforcements. And then this is where you're going to take an action to bombard your opponent. So pretty simple game, but that, that's what the hex pieces are for. You also have a bunch of troop pieces. These are discs. You can see they're uh, round, thin discs. And then these are pretty cool. These are airplanes. So these are used only on the Pacific board, uh, and they're a very, very nice touch. So you also have those same in blue. They all have the same amount and the same type uh, to use in the game. So those are pretty, pretty nifty. So that's a look at those. I, I like having the wooden pieces because they're, they're going to stand up to a lot of plays. You've got a bunch of plastic bags that you can use to store uh, those pieces and, and tokens in. Here also you have four dice. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and get those. These are custom dice, as you can see. They are six-siders. There is one side on each of the die uh, that have two hits or bursts. Then there are three, four sides that have one, you can see, and then there's one blank. So. You might get to roll, say, two of those. Oh, I just rolled uh, one hit. Um, but you can also, well, my rolling's atrocious. Well, there, I got a double. Uh, but you can see, you can, if you're rolling three or four dice, you can potentially wipe out your entire enemy's complement of guys if you roll, uh, roll well. Here is the operations card deck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open these. The game has these cards that you have to take the plan action to gain. And it's like any of these games that have cards. These are going to kind of somewhat break rules or give you extra abilities or extra die or extra pieces. Uh, so you can see here, if you play this card, mobilize, take and place up to two additional troops from your reserve into land areas you control and supply when taking the reinforce action. So you have to take the reinforce action, um, I don't remember where that is. It's here, sorry. It's on this little ancillary board. That's reinforce. So if you take that action, you put a guy there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reinforce, and you took the first one, you're going to put six pieces out. But if you have this card and you play it, you're going to get to put two additional troops. So you can really uh, get, get an advantage there from from the get-go. The other cool thing about any of these operations cards is you can always discard them from your hand to re-roll dice. And you have to unfortunately re-roll all the dice uh, that you rolled. 
So let's say I rolled that and I'm like, well, I really needed four hits. I can't just play that card to re-roll these two. I have to re-roll everything, take a chance. Hey, I got my, the four hits uh, and that's what I needed to discard that card. Uh, so you can see there's three or four of those. Here's an artillery strike, roll two additional dice when taking the, the barrage action, ground assault, counterattack. You may deploy a commander into an advance action space occupied by your opponent's commander this turn. So you can, uh, even though they've taken that space, the advance space, you can actually go ahead, play this card, break the rule, and, and advance into that area. Ambush is cool. Ambush has a red icon, as you can see. That means you don't play those cards on your turn. You play those cards when you are on defense and someone is attacking you. This one's going to allow you to roll two additional dice. There are blitz cards that allow you to deploy a commander from the standby area, which is up here. Very, very valuable. Airborne Assault is going to allow you to paradrop units into any spaces that you want. I think it's two units, I think is what it says. Up to two troops from reserve to the target area, and then you're going to attack units there. You cannot paradrop uh, into your opponent's base or into an area where um, these symbols, you can see no parachute, but that paradrop action is actually found in the uh, the headquarters area called Air, Airborne Assault. Anti-air, intercept. These are specifically used, um, sorry, you can see once again that palm tree symbol. These are used in the, uh, only on, those six cards are only used on the Pacific uh, side, the island side. Here are really handy dandy uh, player aids. Always a good thing to have good player aids. They look Nice, they have all the actions. These are all those tokens and the abilities you get. Here's the round structure, the action icons, uh, and the different support actions that you can take. So there's a look at all those cards. Well, that's all the components for the game. I, I, I'm really excited about this game. I, I enjoy a unique, interesting fast playing game, and I think this one is going to fit that bill for me. Uh, obviously, it's not a true war game, uh, but it has a lot of very cool elements, and I think it's going to be fun. So, therefore, I'm going to call it a war game. So, you can argue with me or do whatever you want to do, but I think this game looks great. I'm going to go ahead and try to play this this weekend. It's New Year's Eve weekend. Uh, and you may not see this for a month or two or longer. We have a big backlog of videos. I'm going to try to play this with my wife and my children uh, and see what their thoughts on uh, are on it before I then uh, take it to play with Alexander. So there you have it. General Orders World War II from Osprey Games. Really nice looking package. Really cool looking little war game. I think it's unique and interesting. Can't wait to give it a play. Uh, check it out if you're interested. Uh, I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.